Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered the new Avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Aang can save the world. In the last episode of Avatar The Last Airbender, we met our core characters. Aang and his flying bison Appa, Katara and her brother Sokka from the Water Tribe, and Prince Zuko and Uncle Iroh from the Fire Nation. Last video was the first episode in this series, and it featured Katara and Sokka finding Aang inside of an iceberg, having been frozen for a hundred years unbeknownst to him. Meanwhile, Prince Zuko, his father, grandfather, and if I recall correctly, great-grandfather have been trying to hunt down the Avatar for an unknown amount of time. We learn about the war that's been going on for about a hundred years caused by the Fire Nation attacking. We also learn that Katara is the only waterbender remaining at the South Pole and that she's searching for someone to teach her to master her waterbending. The episode ended on a cliffhanger when Aang and Katara are leaving from an old abandoned Fire Nation ship after setting off a trap that launched an explosive into the air. Zuko spots them as they're heading back to the village of the South Pole Water Tribe and he prepares to move in for an attack. Before we dive into this episode, I just wanted to say thank you so much for checking out my channel and for watching this video. In case you didn't see the first one, I will link it in the description box down below. I am planning to review the entirety of Avatar The Last Airbender from start to finish, episode by episode, mainly because I have never actually watched the show from start to finish, but I'm stoked to be reviewing the entirety of this show, and I hope you're stoked to be on this journey with me. I'm only on episode 2, but I'm really enjoying this so far, and I truly hope that you are too. And again, thanks for watching. You are awesome. This episode starts out right where we left off, with Katara and Aang walking back to Katara's village. Everyone is standing by idly awaiting their arrival. As they walk up, all of the children happily run up to Aang, excited to see him after he played with them in the last episode. The adults and Sokka, on the other hand... I knew it! You signaled the Fire Navy with that flare! You're leading them straight to us, aren't you? Aang didn't do anything. It was an accident. Yeah, we were on the ship and there was this booby trap and, well, we... we boobied right into it. Katara, you shouldn't have gone on that ship. Now we could all be in danger. Don't blame Katara. I brought her there. It's my fault. Aha! Sokka goes right for the offensive and tells everyone that Aang is a threat to their village. He instructs everyone to get away from him, saying that he is officially banished. Katara tries to defend Aang, saying that he's brought them fun, which their village hasn't had in a long time. Sokka protests, saying that they can't fight firebenders with fun, which Aang argues with, telling him that maybe he should try it sometime. Katara pleads with her grandmother, but she agrees that Aang should be banished. Katara gets fed up and says that if Aang is banished, then she's banished too. And she takes Aang by the hand and walks towards Appa, saying that they're gonna go find a waterbender in the North Pole to mentor her. Katara! Would you really choose him over your tribe? Your own family? Katara, I don't want to come between you and your family. So... You're leaving the South Pole? This is goodbye? Thanks for penguin sliding with me. Where will you go? Guess I'll go back home and look for the airbenders. Wow. I haven't cleaned my room in a hundred years. Aang hops up on Appa and gives him the old yip yip. Katara and all of the kids are sad as they beg him not to leave. As Aang takes off, Grandma tries to comfort Katara, but she just walks away fiercely angry. Sokka prepares the young boys for an attack as we cut over to Aang who's relaxing in a nearby iceberg with Appa. He looks over to see a Fire Nation boat heading right for the village and he does the right thing and springs into action. Meanwhile, both Sokka and Zuko are gearing up for a fierce battle. We see Sokka, face paint, armor and all, standing at the edge of the village when he sees the light of the Fire Nation ship as it approaches. The ground shakes and the earth quakes as the gigantic ship plunges directly into the iceberg that their village is housed on. Sokka, get out of the way!
The whole village looks on in fear as they witness Prince Zuko and his goons walk out of the ship. Sokka charges him, and Zuko makes quick work of him without barely raising a hand. He approaches the rest of the villagers. Where are you hiding him? <laughs> He'd be about this age? Master of all elements? I know you're hiding him! Sokka makes a valiant effort to fight Zuko, but he's made a fool when Zuko easily kicks his butt. Just at the last second, where Zuko is about to fire blast Sokka, Aang shows up on a penguin and takes Zuko out in the process. The rest of the Fire Nation goons surround him to fight. Looking for me? You're the airbender? You're the avatar? Aang? No way. I've spent years preparing for this encounter. Training. Meditating. You're just a child! Well, you're just a teenager. Zuko blasts Aang with fire, and as he does that, Aang defends himself by twirling his air glider to repel the flames like a fan. However, when the flames come close to the kids at the village and they start to scream, Aang stops. He bluntly asks Zuko if he'll stop if Aang agrees to come with him. Zuko nods in agreement, and just like that, Aang is taken by the Fire Nation onto the ship. Don't worry, Katara. It'll be okay. Take care of Appa for me until I get back! Head a course to the Fire Nation! I'm going home. Some time passes, and we see the entire village in sorrow as they rebuild after all the damage done by Zuko and his ship. We cut over to Sokka and Katara debating. If we don't help him, no one will. I know you don't like Aang, but we owe him- Katara! Are you gonna talk all day, or are you coming with me? <gasps> Sokka! Get in. We're going to save your boyfriend. He's not my- Whatever. What do you two think you're doing? You'll need these. You have a long journey ahead of you. Grandma says that it's been so long since she's had hope, but Katara has given it to her. She says that Aang is the Avatar, and as the ones who found him, their destinies are intertwined with his. Katara points out that there's no way that they'll be able to find the Fire Nation ship with just a canoe, and like clockwork, Appa shows up, offering himself as their transportation. Meanwhile, on the Fire Nation ship... This staff will make an excellent gift for my father. I suppose you wouldn't know a father's being raised by monks. Take the Avatar to the prison hold, and take this to my quarters. Hey, you mind taking this to his quarters for me? Aang tries to talk to the guards as they walk him to the prison cell. Right as they go to open the cell, Aang gives them a good air blast and he makes his escape. Meanwhile... Ascend. Elevate. Sokka doesn't believe you can fly, but I do, Appa. Come on, don't you want to save Aang? What was it that kid said? Yeehaw, hup hup, wahoo, uh, yip yip. Appa finally takes flight after Sokka says the command, and just like that, they're off to find the ship. Speak of the devil, back on the ship, Aang is running through the halls, hands tied behind his back, trying to find his air glider. He ends up in a hall filled with multiple guards, but he uses his airbending to swiftly juke his way around them on the ceiling and make his way to the next corridor. finally comes upon Zuko's quarters and finds his air glider, but as he enters, the door slams as Aang is cornered by Zuko. Instead of fighting, Aang takes on the full defensive mode, trying to avoid all of Zuko's attacks. Aang ends up getting a hold of his air glider, and this happens. 
Aang makes his way to the captain's quarters and runs out in an attempt to fly away on his glider, but at the last second, Zuko catches him by his ankle, causing him to crash down onto the ship. As Zuko keeps attacking and Aang keeps defending himself, Appa is seen in the distance approaching the ship. Aang! No! After defeating everyone in one fell swoop, Aang falls unconscious and Sokka and Katara fly down to save him. They load him up onto Appa as Sokka goes to grab Aang's air glider. He is shocked to find Zuko on the other end of it hanging off the side of the ship, but Sokka knocks him down, leaving Zuko hanging from a chain that's coming out of the side of the ship. With the boomerang, I didn't ask for all this flying and magic! The group makes their escape as Appa flies away with them safely on him. Meanwhile, Zuko is being pulled up to the deck of the ship by Uncle Iroh. Zuko and Iroh attempt to shoot Appa down with a massive fire blast, but with perfect timing, Aang deflects it and causes the massive blast to hit the wall of a glacier nearby, which causes the Fire Nation ship to get stuck under the wreckage of the destroyed glacier. Good news for the Fire Lord. The Fire Nation's greatest threat is just a little kid. That kid, Uncle, just did this. I won't underestimate him again. Dig the ship out and follow them! As soon as you're done with that. Back on Appa, Katara is telling Aang all about how what he did was the most amazing thing she's ever seen. She asks him how he did it, but even he doesn't know. It just kind of happened. Why didn't you tell us you were the Avatar? Because... I never wanted to be. But Aang, the world's been waiting for the Avatar to return and finally put an end to this war. And how am I going to do that? According to legend, you need to first master water, then earth, then fire, right? That's what the monks told me. Well, if we go to the North Pole, you can master waterbending. We can learn it together! Katara says that Sokka can even knock the heads of a few Fire Nation goons along the way, and just like that, the three of them are in it together to help Aang master all four elements. But first, Aang says that they have some serious business to attend to here, here, and here. What's there? Here, we'll ride the hopping llamas. Then way over here, we'll surf on the backs of giant koi fish. Then back over here, we'll ride the hog monkeys. They don't like people riding them, but that's what makes it fun. And just like that, the episode comes to an end. I personally feel like this was a fantastic way to bring the intro of the show to an end and wrap it up nicely. This episode didn't necessarily leave me with more questions than I already had, but it did shine some light on a few topics. The first thing that I want to bring up is something that truly resonated with me. This episode would see Sokka going from distrusting of Aang and just kind of generally not liking him, to him having some faith in Aang for the most part. That final scene with the three of them riding off into the sunset made me really happy. It signifies the positive feeling they're all having right now. The fact that though the journey ahead is going to be a long one, there is hope. Another thing I want to bring up is that we got a taste of Sokka's abilities in this episode. By no means was he a super skilled fighter or anything. The only time he actually hurt Zuko was on accident when the boomerang he threw came back and whapped Zuko in the head. But I gotta admit, I feel like Sokka has some serious potential. Watching his form and his ambition really showed us that he is capable, but probably just needs some proper training and time to practice. One thing I love about this show is the way they animate the fighting scenes. I remember seeing an interview with either the creator or one of the artists from the show, and they talk about how they took inspiration from multiple different forms of martial arts when animating the different forms of bending, and I can truly appreciate that. It may not be bending, but they did a great job of animating the rather one-sided fight between Zuko and Sokka. 
All things considered, it flowed pretty well, and they did a good job of portraying Sokka as a semi-skilled yet kind of unorthodox fighter. Another thing I picked up from this episode was the scene where Zuko finally catches the Avatar and he takes custody of Aang's air glider. He says that it will make an excellent gift for his father, which is an interesting statement. I imagine, after hunting the Avatar for most of his life, that Zuko's father will be happy to be in possession of something so important to the Avatar, and of course it'll be a great honor for Zuko to not only find and capture the Avatar, but also present his father with this gift after his father failed to complete the task that Zuko was given. But honestly, I was kind of surprised to find out that Zuko's father is still alive, personally. Hear me out though, in the first episode it's brought up that basically Prince Zuko's entire family line has been hunting the Avatar for generations to no avail. Part of me just kinda assumed that it's a lifelong endeavor considering that it's been ongoing for a hundred years now. I just kind of thought that Zuko had been given the task because his father failed to complete it while he was alive and now that he's gone the task is passed on to Zuko. But then it kind of dawned on me, Zuko is a prince. The Prince of the Fire Nation, which would mean if his father passed away, he would most likely be King Zuko. So, of course, naturally his father is still alive. This thought honestly fills me with fear though. If Prince Zuko is vicious and dead set on capturing the Avatar, how brutal and vicious is his father, the King? On top of that, like, what about when his dad does die and Zuko does become king? I don't know, Zuko seems pretty vicious and in my opinion that's kind of a terrifying thought. Overall, the Fire Nation is just kind of scary in my opinion. They just seem like warbent jerks who just kind of want to destroy all the other benders and I just picture their leader as some kind of insane savage. Furthermore, I can't help but wonder what caused this 100 year war. In the intro they said that it started when the Fire Nation attacked, but I can't help but wonder why did the Fire Nation attack in the first place? Were they provoked? Was there some kind of misunderstanding? Was there maybe an altercation higher up with the leaders of the four groups? All questions I'm hopeful that we get the answer to by the end of this series. Now, on a lighter note, I have to bring up that moment when we see Appa fly for the first time. That moment was just so impactful in my opinion. Appa is one of my favorite characters. He's so big, cute, fluffy, and seemingly gentle for the most part. Seeing him fly for the first time in the amazement that Katara and Sokka experience was just astonishing and it made for quite a picture perfect positive moment. Also, I cannot help but bring up that scene where Katara is trying to convince Sokka that they need to go after Aang. Katara was so sure that Sokka was going to argue, as was I honestly. I fully expected him to call her crazy and shoot the idea down, but lo and behold he had already prepared a canoe for them to pursue the Fire Nation ship. On that same note, we gotta bring up Katara and Sokka's grandmother. I was so shocked when she gave Sokka and Katara her blessing to go after Aang. I was sure that she was gonna forbid it and that they were gonna have to sneak off to find him, but it's clear that to Gram Gram, this is bigger than her family. This is bigger than their village. This is bigger than the South Pole. This is fate. This is destiny. Them finding Aang is the only hope they have to end this war and potentially save the world from a fate ruled by the Fire Nation. It made me happy to see her embrace them in their pursuit. One final thing I just kinda have to address is that scene where Aang is hanging out on that iceberg with Appa after they were banished from the village. Aang makes this comment. Yeah, I liked her too. I don't know about you, but Aang seemed really bummed out when he said that, and Katara seemed devastated when Aang was banished. She even almost went with him herself. Now, call me crazy, but is there some chemistry between the two of them? I can't help but wonder if they both might end up falling in love by the end of the series. I got no clue if that's going to come to fruition, but just saying, I'm calling it now if it does. I guess we'll just have to see how the rest of this plans out. But what do you think? Are you excited to see where this story takes us? Let me know in the comments down below and please no spoilers. If you made it all the way to this point in the video, do me a huge solid and leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite group of benders is between water, earth, fire, and air. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and let me know in the comments what you thought of it. I always love seeing your guys' feedback and as always, thank you oh so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.